This is the Jewel case. 110 pounds of marijuana was found in a secret compartment in a car that defendant Jewel drove across the border into the United States. There was no dispute that Jewel did this. The issue was whether he had done so culpably, that is, whether Jewel acted with mens rea. In his own defense, Jewel testified that he did not know the marijuana was there. There was evidence that Jewel did know there was a contraband in the secret compartment. The jury convicted and Jewel appealed. Jewel's counsel did not challenge the sufficiency of the evidence, which the panel majority conceded was enough to support a conviction. Rather, counsel for the defendant argued for reversal on the ground that the jury was wrongly instructed by the trial judge. The place to start, and to finish, in every case is the statute defining the criminal offense. The offense charge was knowingly transporting marijuana into the United States. Congress chose to use the word knowingly instead of the word recklessly or any of the other culpability terms in circulation. In doing so, Congress presumably intended actors who were merely negligent or even reckless in bringing drugs into the country could not be punished under this statute. At trial, the defense requested this instruction. To return a guilty verdict, the jury must find that the defendant knew he was in possession of a controlled substance. The requested instruction tracks the statute, but the Jewell opinion reads it as a request to instruct the jury that the prosecution had to prove something the court calls positive knowledge. The expression positive knowledge occurs ten times in our one-and-a-half-page excerpt from the Jewell opinion. The panel majority, apparently in its zeal to wage war on drugs, was afraid to allow the jury to be reminded of what the statute said. Consider this. The defendant is charged under a statute that makes it an offense to act with knowledge that P, whatever P is. This is pretty much the Jewel case. Now, query, is the defendant entitled to the following instruction? Get ready for this. The prosecution must prove that the defendant had positive knowledge that P. The answer, obviously, is no. The word positive is not in the statute, and there is no reason to read it in. It would only confuse the jury or lead the jury to conclude mistakenly that the prosecution bore the burden of showing the defendant had acquired some special exacting kind of knowledge. But Jewell did not ask for this instruction. The instruction that the Jewell panel does approve is the following. You may convict the defendant if you find that his ignorance was solely and entirely the result of a conscious purpose to avoid learning the truth. Ignorance, the last time I checked the dictionary, means lack of knowledge. A person who is ignorant of a fact is a person who does not know. The approved instruction amounts to telling a jury it may convict a defendant who lacks knowledge, if he did not want to know. As judge, later to become Justice Anthony Kennedy, writes in his dissent, this is all wrong. You can't learn something just by not wanting to. He suggests this analogy. There is something inside. Can you find out what's inside just by not looking? Of course not. To compound the panel's confusion, it claims to be following the model penal code. The code says, when knowledge of the existence of a particular fact is an element of an offense, such knowledge is established if a person is aware of a high probability of its existence, 
unless he actually believes that it does not exist. The jewel panel cherry picks this clause. Knowledge is established if a person is aware of a high probability, while totally ignoring this, unless he actually believes that it does not exist. Consider again the language of the instruction the jewel panel approved. Convict if the defendant was aware of a high probability of P, but purposely avoided knowledge that P. Yet if the actor, believing that P, is aware of a high probability, then under the model penal code, the instruction amounts to saying the actor knew that P, but purposely avoided knowledge that P, which is self-contradictory and bound to confuse the jury. What the panel is trying to say is that the jury can rightly conclude that the defendant knew that P, but purposely avoided exposure to further evidence that P. A skillful prosecutor will tell the jury that avoiding further evidence of P is itself evidence that one knows that P. Consider this case. A baggie of marijuana is found on the back seat of a defendant's car. To convict, must the prosecution prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant had field tested what was in the bag? Of course not. The defendant can be proven beyond a reasonable doubt to have known he was carrying marijuana even though he did not field test what was in the bag. If the defense will not stipulate to the fact, the prosecution will have to put an expert on the stand to satisfy its, proving, its burden of proving beyond a reasonable doubt that what the defendant was in possession of was indeed THC containing marijuana. The jewel panel might have been worried that the jury would confuse knowledge with proof beyond a reasonable doubt. Which of the following statements about jewel are true? To meet its burden, the prosecution must a. prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant knew that the defendant was in possession of marijuana, b. Prove that the defendant knew beyond a reasonable doubt that he was in possession of marijuana. Or C, both of the above. That is, to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant knew beyond a reasonable doubt. It could be that the jewel panel took the defendant to be asking for instruction B. Correct answer, though, is A. You don't have to be a biochemist to be sent to prison for knowingly importing marijuana. But you knew that already.